Hi there, welcome to Calculus of Variations. In the last video, I said I would derive an equation which would define all of the differences that would occur whenever we move an element of rope down like this to another point. So we're putting our thumb here and pulling it down and we're going to look at this and we're going to find out all the changes that occur from this and we're going to write a mathematical equation that defines all these changes. Now we're going to do it in two parts. First from the last video we know there's going to be a change in position. And there's going to be a change in the gradient as well. So in this video gradient. In this video we're just going to look at the positional change. Now just to help us along the way if we think of a line we draw a line like this okay and we know that the gradient of that line there is delta y upon delta x so we can say m equals delta y upon delta x or if we want to we could go to that point in the line and we could say m and if we multiply m by delta x delta x we will get delta y we've just changed this equation transpose this equation for delta y now if we had instead of a straight line we had a curve so there's a curve now that's some function x some function f and that's x and that's y then again if we took this point here the gradient of that point there would be given by df by dx so that's just the gradient of that point there now if i could draw it i'll try and i'll try and get the pen on there let's just see if i get a line there Oh, let's get that up there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, no, it's not well. Anyway, that's the gradient there. Now, if we take that gradient at that point there and multiply it again by delta x, same delta x is there, then we'll get that little distance there, delta y. So we're taking that df by dx, multiply it by delta x, then we will get delta y. Now also if you were to swap the axes here, and if you made that axis there, the, the x-axis, and you made that axis there, the y-axis, then you could write that equation as df by dy times delta y would equal delta x. All we've done is changed the way the graph the graph is, is written. It's just a an all real real kind of all we've done is just change the, the letters here. So if we remember that okay now when we change this position here What we're doing is we're changing the function df by dy and if we multiply that by a small change delta y we will get our delta s so let me just write that out again so you understand well actually we're doing it in terms of this example so we'll write it in terms of the potential energy equation uh, energy potential equals that integral from 0 to L of y 
of x times root of 1 plus y derived of x squared dx. Right, now we don't really need these at this integral sign because what we're doing is we're looking at a localized phenomenon. We're looking at the the change here when we keep x constant. So we're not adding up any of this. We're just looking at one infinitesimal point. So we don't really need to, to look at it in terms of that integral. So this here, if we call that our function f, then what we would have, we would have when we move that rope down the way, we would have a partial f rope by partial y. That's partial f by partial y because we've kept x constant. And if we multiply that by delta y, then what we will get is the change here, delta energy potential. Okay, now more generally, if we use the general equation here, then we would have dfi dy x is constant. That's partially f partial y of x constant. Delta y would equal delta s. Now I'll call that s1 because this is the change in s due to the change in position. We've also got to look at the change in s due to the change in gradient, which we'll do in the next video. So that's one part of the equation that we're looking for. Again, if we look at this here, it's saying we work out the rate of change of the function with respect to y, xl constant, and then if we multiply that by delta y, then you'll get the change in the value s exactly the same as in this example up here. If we look at the rate of change of the function there at that point, df by dy, multiply it by delta y, we get delta x. It's the same thing, and that's all we're doing here, except that the answer we're going to get is the delta s. Okay, thank you, and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.